Hi everyone, recently I purchased the iPhone 15 Pro second hand, of course, always looking to save some money. And I wanted to know if it was worth buying Apple Log 4, as that's basically why I got it. So in this video, I'm gonna dive into some clips that I got around London using ProRes 422LT shot in Apple Log to see if it is worth it for that alone. And afterwards, I'll go through the positives of this, what it fixes, a negative or two, and then I'll show you what I think about actually buying this for Apple Log on its own for smartphone filmmaking. Now the extent of which Apple Log fixes some really key issues that have been bugging me with smartphone filmmaking is quite outstanding. The first one being the softness. Now with a regular H.265 codec on your phone, it's really, really sharp. And these images are side by side of my face and my body show you how sharp it is compared to Apple Log. Apple Log is absolutely beautiful to look at. It really, really is. And I have to admit when I was filming around London, I kind of forgot that I was using a phone, such as the softness. Now you still have a small sensor on the phone, so the depth of field obviously is still different, but my God is the softness on this looking so, so good. And when you get into the nitty gritty details of hair, for example, you can really see the difference. When you zoom in, how crunchy and horrible and noisy it looks in H.265 versus the softness and the beauty of Apple Log. It really is a huge, huge upgrade in terms of softness. Now, of course, another benefit of using Apple Log is the expanded dynamic range. So basically the more detail you get in the highlights and the shadows, it's a big, big improvement. And in these shots, particularly in the shadow areas, you can see what you save using Apple Log versus H.265. And even in dark corridors, like I show you here in my home, you can still see part of the corridor and the outline of the door frame further down the corridor, about 10 feet away having used Apple Log versus using H.265. It is a big, big difference and it gives you a lot more flexibility when it comes to editing. It is such a beautiful thing to edit with Apple Log. You can stretch your highlights, stretch your shadows, you can push things so much further and you can really transform a shot from what it would have looked like in real life to something almost completely different. It gives you a lot more flexibility and a dynamic range is absolutely superb on this and it will give you a lot more options in post-production as well. Now, one of my biggest bugbears with smartphone filmmaking, probably the most annoying thing I've ever had with smartphone filmmaking is the tone mapping. Now, tone mapping is essentially what Apple do with their iPhones so that even if you have a third party app and lock your exposure, it will still try and correct the exposure and override your third party's app locking of it. So if you have a high contrast situation, for example, and you're moving your phone or something's moving past the lens, the exposure around certain areas of the image can just slightly change and fluctuate, which is not what you want to happen. So with Apple Log, it basically completely eradicates that. It really does just stop it in its tracks, which is one of the most amazing things about Apple Log. If you want to create something that looks not so much like a smartphone shot film and has something look really professional, then getting rid of that tone mapping is one of the biggest ways you can make it look professional. So it's really a huge step up for smartphone filmmaking and a real game changer. Killing the tone mapping is a massive thumbs up from me. Now I wanted to do a test. The quality of Apple Log is obviously fantastic, but what does it look like compared to Filmic Pro's Log version three? Are they comparative in any way? So let's take a look at the highlights, the shadows, and also the softness comparisons. 
Now with Log V3, it looks nice. You can see we're getting more dynamic range, but the highlights are looking a little bit blown out. When we go into the HEVC, again, it doesn't look too great. But when we look at Apple Log, the highlights are already looking much nicer. That softness in the image is already looking much nicer. And when we go into a color corrected version of Filmic Pro Log V3, it is an improvement having if you didn't use Log V3, but it isn't that great compared to Apple Log. The softness is much more improved. The highlight detail is infinitely better. And it just gives you much more of a film look, which is, of course, what we want in our smartphone filmmaking. It's just head and shoulders above what third party apps can do. And of course, you can see in the close up here, it becomes much more apparent. So you think on a small phone screen, it might not look that clear, but the details when you really deep dive are much, much, much more different compared to Log V3 to Apple Log. Now I've been singing Apple Log's praises for this whole video so far, but there is probably one negative, And to be honest, it is the only negative really, is the storage that you're gonna need to shoot the nice ProRes colors with the Apple Log. Now you can shoot Apple Log with H.265, so you can get around it that way or shoot in ProRes Proxy, but it will still take up a lot of space if you start moving up the ProRes ranks. So as you can see here on this graph, in H.265, for 10 seconds of film, you're getting 21 megabytes. For Apple ProRes 422 Proxy, for 10 seconds of film, you're gonna get 133 megabytes. For 422 LT, which is what I filmed this whole video in, is 324 megabytes per 10 seconds. 422 is 549 megabytes, half a gig for 10 seconds of Apple ProRes 422. Apple ProRes 422 HQ, which is of course the highest quality, for 10 seconds takes 703 megabytes. It is absolutely massive. As I say, you can shoot Apple Log in H.265, which is gonna give you much less uh, storage taken up and much better for you. But if you want the best quality, you're gonna to want to go into the ProRes realms as well. So it's something to think about and you're gonna to have to use an SSD. So I usually use a Samsung T7 SSD. If you've got an external SSD, it's not gonna be that much of a hassle and it's much smoother to edit with as well and gives you many more options in post-production. Now, if you're enjoying this channel and want to learn more about smartphone filmmaking, then I highly suggest you hit that subscribe button and like button right now. It helps the channel grow and it helps you. Now, is Apple Log worth buying the iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max 4? In my personal opinion, yes, it is. It is a huge, huge upgrade from my iPhone 12, which I've been filming before with my YouTube channel. In fact, the video I shot all day with this and these little talking head points are with my iPhone 15 Pro and ProRes uh, 422LT, you have to try and remember that, with Apple Log and color corrected myself in DaVinci Resolve. The softness, the dynamic range, the tone mapping that you get rid of is absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to make my next short film with this phone in Apple Log. It's gonna really make everything look a lot more professional. So I think if you're looking to make professional videos out of your phone, then it is worth getting an iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max with. But if you're not gonna do color grading, you're not really looking to get into that kind of depth of color grading, it's really not worth it to be honest. But for me, it's been a well worth purchase and I cannot wait to progress with this phone and make more projects with it. If you enjoy this and want to learn more about Blackmagic Camera app, which I've been filming with, do check my whole tutorial on that app right here, right now. It's a free app on iOS only and it's pretty damn good for a first gen.